What is up, my riders? I am so hype for this video. I'm just going to get right into it. We reviewed the 70 My dash camera, and I reached out because I wanted to start a series comparing different dash cameras. This is going to be the review portion. I'm not going to start the full comparison of every single dash camera until I start getting more on my list to compare and contrast. This one I'm really excited for. So today we got the Pelsi, hope I'm pronouncing that right, P10 mirror dash cam. This is really, really cool because this is a full touchscreen dash camera. It's 10 inch uh, length, which gives you a lot of space for just maneuvering through the menu. It has a 1440 2K capable front camera, so very similar to the 70 My. And then the rear is a 1080p resolution. It has collision detection with blind spot monitoring and lane change, which 70 My kind of has, but not really. This is like full out claims, collision detection, all that good stuff using the rear facing dash camera in conjunction with the front. It has a G sensor, so it'll detect if you're in a collision or anything like that. It has GPS tracking with night vision. Uh, you have voice control, which is really cool. You can say to lock the video, to show the rear camera, to show the front camera. It comes with the front camera, the rear camera, and it actually throws in a 32 gigabyte SD card compatible with it as well. Uh, you can get this specific model, which is a new product. They just released the P10. They had different pro models, but they wanted to release a uh, new version of each model so there's a pro and then there's a uh, original version they have a p10 pro a p12 pro and then they just came out with the p10 and the p12 is no longer available either so i don't know if this will just take over the whole pro name or if this is just the more entry level version of the p10 i wasn't really updated on that but i'm really excited to try it out right now it's 79.99 on Amazon and you can get a 10% off coupon. So it is really cool that it is in the same realm as the 70 My. So without further ado, I'm gonna do the unboxing experience. We're gonna take it out, look at it, try to figure out how to set it up, then do the installation and the drive around with it to show you guys some footage and then come back and summarize. So without any hesitation, let's jump right into it. And yes, if you guys couldn't tell already, I did have caffeine, but all right, we're just gonna peel off the plastic. We are greeted front and center with the Pelsi P10, which is the dash camera that is also the mirror. Uh, this is the cable that plugs into the cigarette lighter. That's cool that it gives you an extra uh, plug. The USB-C, this is a GPS module. So it actually has a way to give you exact coordinates of where you are. That's a starter kit with a cleaning cloth for your window, a tuck tool for the cords. Uh, we, and uh, we have the rear camera. Without further ado, let's take a look at what this looks like. Safe trip, the screen of this mirror dash cam sleeps in one minute. Please adjust the front lens for a better viewing after installation. So this is also going to act as your rear view mirror, which is actually a really crazy concept to me. And then if you guys can see on the back, that is what is going to hook up the straps. And then there's the camera itself. Let's see. Okay. It has some turning radius and you can also pull it out and adjust where it is as well. I don't know how it's gonna fit with mine, so we're just gonna have to go out and test it out. So let's jump right into that. All right, boys, hopefully this is enough light. We're in my car right now trying to figure it out. So we're gonna go step by step through this as class 10 recommended micro SD. And then it says mount the dash camera with your uh, rubber straps. So, 
let's see what I can do here. Wrap this around. And then, okay, well, I'm kind of... Okay, I'm kind of realizing right now that it's going to be a it's going to be a hard fit. So I guess uh the P there's a P12 and a P10. I guess for me technically the P12 since it's a little bit bigger would probably be bigger. I didn't even tell them the size of my previous mirror this is pretty similar but it sticks out a little bit here and it's pretty flush here i had to actually pull this out to extend the camera and then i'm gonna have to adjust right there uh we are going to pull that off that's kind of a trippy looking thing do it and then i will pop back when we're ready to go boys so i'm not trying to be picky i'm just gonna let you guys know how it is uh, the part that gets plugged in is going to sit there. So I guess it is nice to run it up over top, but, um, I, I guess it's cause I'm just used to letting the cord hang down, but I guess they, they mean to tuck it. Cord is plenty long. Cigarette lighter is all set up. They want you to do something with your reverse light. I'm not sure if that's just like a backup cam thing. It says that, uh, set the vehicle in reverse gear, then identify the wire that feeds the reverse light from the rear light cluster, the rear trigger wire with the positive terminal of the correct wire. I don't know how to wire stuff. I'm not familiar with wiring and that seems like a lot going into it. So let's hope that doesn't completely just destroy the functionality of this because I'm not trying to get into all that just for a dash camera, but uh, we're gonna open the garage here and try to start my car so I can kind of mess around with the setup. Right now it looks like I can see everything. It looks like a mirror, like it looks like a mirror. So I don't think you have to do that red wire for the rear setting, I'm hoping not. Let's plug in the back camera, which is here. Uh, I will say, and I'm, not trying to sound picky at all, but uh, they want you to do it in, I think. The rear one? Because the only mounting solution you get in here is screw. Oh, no. You get double-sided sticky tape. I'm not screwing anything into my car. Uh, my car is too nice for that. Not hard at all just really confusing but uh so far it seems like it works as a rear mirror still and it's kind of cool because it's like got this cool tone to it <coughs> i still am sick boy so i'm sorry about that we're gonna install the rear and then get back to you guys okay i just realized when i was installing the rear camera already you want your cords to go this way not how i had them previously because any other way they will run into each other all right right away you're greeted with a formatting your sd card that actually looks super super freaking clear right now i didn't set up any of the other features uh with the gps because i am really really excited to just see how this thing looks on the road before i like actually completely install it as my main camera because the whole journey of this is to find a camera that would either replace my 70 my give me some contenders with it and uh I don't want to fully commit until we actually get a good look at it. So uh, let's go through the features real quick on it, set it up, and then I'm going to jump into uh, what it looks like on the road. All right, guys, we're going to jump right into the driving portion now that I've kind of messed around with it. I'm going to fully show you guys the interface once I get back, but I want to try to get a clear recording of everything with this camera because I am quite confused. Okay, as I'm driving, guys, I do notice that it's a lot more sensitive than my 70 My. Every time I hit a bump, it's like registering an emergency recording, which I guess is good. Or maybe it just, the high sensitivity is really, really like 
sensitive to stuff. The one downside I need to figure out is uh, how to not have this be showing when I'm driving, because if I'm trying to check my rear view, it would kind of get really confusing. I mean, you can do it so that it's just the right side, which is my rear view camera, but I don't know if that's good enough to replace your rear view mirror completely. You can swipe here, and that's my front, and that's my rear. You can adjust like where it's shown, but uh, I don't think that can replace just your rear view mirror in total, which is kind of like scary to me. See, tilt collision detected. So uh, I definitely want to lower the setting because both on high, this registers bumps as a collision, whereas my other one didn't. I'm gonna play some of the audio for you guys, but I'm just gonna sum it up now. It sounds awful and I remove it most of the time because it's just gonna hurt your ears. Alright, another complaint is that uh, the SD card slot is up top. So for me, with my Volkswagen Jetta GLI, it's a 2016, I have to tilt the mirror down every single time I do that. This cord is slightly in the way. This cord is hanging because I didn't run it. So that's all good and dandy. That's my fault for that. Um, I'm noticing something else that is a negative. You're going to have a bunch of fingerprints that's going to be like a given because you're using the mirror to touch it so you're gonna have tons of fingerprints i guess that's why it came with a wiping cloth another thing with the mirror as a dash camera uh it is going to jiggle no matter how much you have it in place because it isn't actually a properly mounted mirror it is just using these little bands to hook up and i have it on the tightest one like i don't think i could get it any more secure than that without breaking the mirror i don't know you guys will have to be in the market specifically for rear view mirror dash camera to want want it but we are going to check the footage that i recorded while i was out driving and we'll see how it compared to the 70 by All right, guys, so after spending the last hour trying to convert footage and get footage to work to use for you guys, I'm overall obviously going to give the experience a 2 out of 10. hate doing this, but I would not recommend this for most people. For $83, the 70 Mi is a lot better of a solution. I'm not going to compare every single one to the 70 Mi, but I'm going to use as a reference point, obviously, to the best that I've seen so far. The 70 Mi is so much better, and the whole experience I've had has just left a bad taste in my mouth with this camera. They can comment down below whether or not it has to do with the SD card. You can let me know. Uh, or maybe you just can't use this with a Mac, but formatting did not work at all. I had to change the .ts to .mp4, finding a, a correct converter, and then going through the process of converting and checking it over, all that good stuff. It took me so freaking long to do that. I could not imagine using this as a daily product. Uh, I appreciate them reaching out to me and I will specifically say that if you need any help with stuff and you have camera already from this company, Tina, 
uh, reached out and helped me a lot with everything. So I, I want to say a special thank you to her. Uh, and obviously, being in the customer service field, you don't have control of any of the units or whatever. The quality needs drastic improvement on a lot of categories. I would specifically say that my recommendation for them would be make a unit that actually completely replaces the mirror as a replacement. I would also say the cord setup is completely a mess. Change it around so that it flows better together. Uh, SD card on the top makes it almost impossible with my specific car to pop it out and then you have to constantly adjust. I do like the fact that they're trying something different having it as the rear view mirror, but the rear view camera itself should be at least above 1080 if it's going to fully replace using your rear mirror, activating itself with emergency features and all kinds of stuff which kind of got annoying. And I'm sure I'm I'm being very nitpicky with it because some people could probably make it work for them. I'm just highlighting some of the, the, the actual deal breakers for me. It gets a lot of fingerprints on it. So if you're going to use it as a mirror as well, you would probably want like a type of screen protector or something that is anti fingerprint magnet. And maybe they think, well, you're gonna set it up and just let it go and do its own thing. But when I was going to look in the rear view mirror when I needed it while I was driving, it was activating emergency recording and then I couldn't even see to know what was happening behind me and the quality is so bad with the rear camera i can't tell what's happening anyway so i was constantly checking my left and right i just honestly think that that above anything makes it a safety concern for most people i don't recommend it i do want to say that i i think that the front camera is very usable i think it's a decent quality and i think if they put some of that tech into regular dash cameras it would be a, a viable option. Rear needs a lot of help. It's not even really usable. I don't even know why it's like included. If it's the main point, it should be a lot better. That's my personal opinion. You guys can go off whatever you think. You guys can be the judge of the footage and everything that I had to go through and make your decision from this. And I would still say 70 my is the best option, but we are Apparently getting other companies that are reaching out, so let's hope and see if we get something better. The overall for the 70 Mai in comparison, I would give a solid 8.5 out of 10 for overall being worth the money. I would give this a solid 2.5 out of 10 for being worth the money. I said before in the other video, look for Sony sensors. If they highlight having a Sony IMX sensor or a Starvis sensor, they're going to be higher up than the majority of dash camera companies that just copy and paste. There's a lot of Chinese companies that will steal from other companies and then just change the way that it looks on the outside. And I'm not saying that Pelsi is that in any regard i'm just saying my full opinions and i don't recommend it uh hopefully you guys enjoy the series it's going to be starting up full way when i can start getting more companies to send me stuff but i love you make sure to be happy show us i'll see you guys in the next one as always